nice to see they're still, you know, as a boy, there was a lot of them in the sky. When I first went, uh, got out of high school and went to college, one of the first flights I flew to go to another college was, was in a, uh, a plane of this configuration. And that was uh, 1962, 61, 62. Most of the smaller airplanes we use up here have been flying for decades, many of them for 50 or 60 years. With the rough conditions Alaska dishes out, why are old planes still the staple of remote travel? Napa Auto Parts is proud to present Napa's Inside Alaska. I'll tell you about this, when I was talking about vintage airplanes, it goes back as far as I do, or maybe a little further than I do. Uh, seems to me the DC-3s and the C-47s Go back to the time of Doolittle, Jimmy Doolittle. I remember hearing when I was a boy about how Doolittle had taken off a, uh, I think it was C-47, but they're pretty much the same configuration. As a test pilot, he had taken one off with a full load on it, you know, which was, he could land with one engine, but after he landed with one engine testing it, then he went ahead and took off with it, with one engine <laughs> and a full load on, which uh, means that's a heck of an airplane. Uh, the amount of weight it carries and the displacement, the amount of power it has, it, uh, it was definitely the airplane of the day. Planes like the DC-3, the de Havilland Beaver and Otter, and of course the Super Cub are well suited for Alaska's conditions because of their simple, rugged construction. Their practical designs have been proven over time. So when flying in Alaska, you're likely to have a very experienced pilot and a time-tested aircraft. And they're still flying and I'm still fishing. The Good News River Lodge is serviced by Trans Northern Aviation. For reservations, call 907-245-1879 or go to transnorthern.com.